My name is Grace Wanless, and I am doing research for NASA and South Carolina IDEA Networks of Biomedical Research Excellence. Today, we will visit the exciting topic of cosmic rays, space weather, and human chronobiology. No man is an island entire of itself, as the poet said, and neither is our planet Earth. It's part of a solar system lodged in the bosom of deep space. Just like on our planet, Earth, in space, there is weather too. The weather in space is much more extreme and high-powered than on Earth. Space weather comes from the sun. The sun constantly gives off streams of energetic charged particles. This, with embedded electric and magnetic fields, is called solar wind, and it is the interaction of the solar wind with the Earth that causes weather in space, and auroras on Earth. There are occasions when storms on the sun produce coronal mass ejections. One CME can contain millions of tons of plasma, a hot gas made up of charged particles. On some occasions, this CME is directed towards the Earth. The large amount of particles and embedded electromagnetic fields can strongly affect our planet. Orbiting astronauts and spacecraft, power stations, and satellites may be harmed. Additionally, there can be massive power and cell phone outages, as well as the disruption of radio and GPS signals. But what about space weather's effect on individuals, if there are any? How subtle are they? The gross rhythms we experience on Earth, like the day and night cycle, the seasons, the months, are driven by internal factors, initiated by the Earth's own rhythms. But there are also external factors that affect us. The solar cycle is a nearly periodic 11-year change in the sun's activity, measured in terms of variations in the number of observed sunspots on the solar surface. Sunspots have been observed since the early 17th century, and the sunspot time series is the longest continuously observed time series of any natural phenomena. The number and size of sunspots Solar flares and coronal loops all exhibit a synchronized fluctuation from active to quiet to active again with a period of 11 years. The most intense space weather around our planet are called space or magnetic storms. These are temporary disturbances of Earth's magnetosphere, our shield, caused by a solar wind shock wave and or cloud of magnetic field that interacts with the Earth's magnetic field. They are, in effect, electromagnetic hurricanes in space, and they strongly affect us on Earth. This opens the door for exploration of a possible solar influence on physiology, since there exists substantial evidence that living organisms respond to the variability solar, and possibly lunar effects. Consider the daily circadian rhythms, the weekly, monthly, and even annual cycles. So, let's ask the question, does space weather affect human biology? Are humans also influenced by the ambient geomagnetic fluctuations due to space weather? Our data consists of measurements of blood pressure and heart rate variability, plus space weather storm metrics. To function, the human heart relies on self-generated electrical impulses. It therefore may respond to fluctuations of the ambient magnetic field. Such responses may reveal themselves through similar statistical behavior, even if more direct correlations aren't present in the organism's blood pressure, heart rate, or other measures. We have almost 13 years of physiological data, with most observations taken every 15 minutes. 
Our method is to employ the empirical mode decomposition. This decomposes a given signal into a set of elemental signals called intrinsic mode functions. It's like it takes a colorful shoal and unwinds the different strands separately. Adding them together produces the original signal. In collaboration with University of Minnesota colleagues, we extend this study with Japanese measurements of heart blood pressure, systolic and diastolic, and heart rate variability to search for correlations with space weather, specifically the DST index. We use measurements of heart blood pressure, again systolic and diastolic, and heart rate variability, a portion of which is shown here, to search for correlations with space weather. Empirical mode decomposition is used to eliminate gross and obvious rhythms in order to detect possible subtle influences. Here is a look at the heart rate data again and the space weather magnetic fluctuations below in red. The biggest problem we experienced in our analysis is the obvious gaps that exist in the physiological data. The empirical mode decomposition method requires fixed cadence data and it has been with considerable difficulty that we have settled on a methodology to deal with the data gap problems. This is now being done and empirical mode decomposition data is found for 85 minimum city hours intervals which, which have uninterrupted data measured every half an hour. This is a sample showing some of those heart rate data with the circles and the EMD decomposition of the signal. The next step is to do the same decomposition for their space weather data. Now that this goal has been achieved, it will be possible to compare statistics, including simple things like cross correlations on the individual intrinsic mode functions. This is a work in progress. Following this, with sufficient data, we will find overlapping data that allows empirical mode decomposition to be compared during space-time intervals, which are the most intense space weather events. In conclusion, these days people use Fitbit watches and other automated devices to record measurements like these. We have access to a unique data set of decade-scale measurements of human physiology. The question that we are interested in is whether there is some correlation between physiological signals and space weather. If we can establish that there is such a connection, then the Fitbit data becomes a serious health monitor, especially for those prone to heart attacks. At this point, I do not have any answers, but have set in place algorithms and computer codes to better explore the question. I have solved the difficult problem of selecting intermittent data and finding intervals of continuous data. That will allow for comparisons with space data, and I have been able to compute empirical mode decompositions. Thank you!